Howdy folks, welcome back to the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. In this video, I'm going to do a review on the BioLite Camp Stove 2. If you're new to the channel, I upload two times a week on videos on the outdoors, survival, do-it-yourself, and reviews. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with the channel. The BioLite stove uses biomass to fuel your outdoor cooking. It combines technology and old school concepts to create a stove that can cook and charge electronic devices. This combination of features makes it really appealing for people who are going to be out away from civilization for an extended period of time. BioLite sent me the stove a few weeks ago to test and review. And if you look in the description below, there's going to be a link for my affiliates link. So if you decide to buy this stove or any other products, it really helps the channel grow um, and uh, do a lot of videos like this. But in any case, uh, in this video, I'm going to do a full on review on its efficiency and design and also give you my full impressions on how this thing works as a camp stove and as a backpacking stove. There's two main parts to the stove, the electronic slash blower assembly and the combustion chamber. The thermal probe goes into the hole in the combustion chamber and the bottom of the electronic assembly is locked into place when the leg is extended. Because the legs are wider than most other stoves, you're going to have a little bit more solid platform for heavier cookware like cast iron. The bottom of the unit has a USB outlet for charging or an accessory light. Here's how the whole thing works. The thermal probe picks up heat from the combustion chamber and on the blower assembly, the fan draws air onto the heat sink, which creates a differential in temperature. The difference in temperature is what makes a thermoelectric generator work. Air is forced in between the double walls of the combustion chamber. The air is then fed into the combustion chamber to feed the fire. The rest of the air is heated in between the double walls and the oxygen rich air is vented at the top of the combustion chamber to ignite the gases. The Camp Stove 2 has two main improvements over its predecessor, an LED status panel and a more efficient electric generator. The fire starter that they supply with the stove works pretty well. It's made out of a wood fiber and paraffin wax and it only takes one strike from a ferro rod to ignite it. During the startup, the chamber is gonna smoke a lot until it's all heated up. Once the combustion chamber reaches critical temperature, the smoke is ignited and there's no more smoke in your eyes. In this video, I'm gonna be using cast iron to cook with. For my viewers that like to go overland camping, canoeing, or kayaking, Will really appreciate that this thing can handle heavier cookware. The LED accessory light has a cool feature where it can tap on or off and also dim as well. With the fire going at full blast, it really takes no time at all for it to heat up the cast iron. The downside to this type of stove is that you have to lift up your cookware to refuel. Going at full blast, I'm having to refuel about every two to three minutes. The high heat output allows for effective cooking and four different fan speeds really helps you control the temperature of the flame. To do all these tests I processed quite a bit of firewood because I wasn't quite sure how much this thing would consume. I was pleasantly surprised to note that this thing is very efficient when it comes to the use of wood. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that the gases that are escaping from the top are also combusted. Overall, I think this is a really nice package to cook. You can easily control your flame, and also you have an accessory light, so you can cook in complete darkness. To test the heat output of the stove, I did a one liter boil test. I'm using a standard stainless steel pot without a heat exchanger, and in this test, I'm not gonna be using a lid. The ambient air temperature is 40 degrees, and the water is about 60 degrees, and we're testing this at 100 feet of elevation. It 
It took approximately 10 minutes for the stove to reach a rolling boil and took three refuels to do it. I also did another boil test using similar parameters. This time we used one half liter and we used the lid. To get this to a rolling boil, it took 4 minutes 20 seconds. Also note that the different type of wood that you're going to be using is going to give you different heat outputs. In this video, I was using poplar as my fuel source. To charge my battery up 5%, it took about 3.5 minutes. While this did charge up my phone pretty quickly, it did dip the battery light in the BioLite stove just a little bit. But it didn't take much time at all for it to recover and charge itself back up. Since all wood stoves are going to have some sort of soot that's accumulating on the cookware, I decided to show you guys what that looked like. I must say that the cookware is a little bit cleaner than other wood stoves, and all it took was a nylon brush and some water to take it off. So those are my overall thoughts on the BioLite stove. I think this thing is pretty awesome. Not only can you charge a cell phone with fire, which is still kind of mind boggling, but um, it's also a carbon neutral way to cook your food out in the field. Uh, for those thinking that this might not be a good option for backpacking, um, you know, one thing to note is, you know, like a, an MSR whisper light is, you know, not too much you know, uh, smaller than this, you know, it's about this big. And then you're also adding two or three canisters of fuel, liquid fuel, which al also has the extra bulk and all that stuff. And if any fuel spills on your food or on your gear, um, that can be a, a big contamination hazard. So just, just things to consider. Um, overall, I think this is a great little stove and honestly is probably what most people would end up ever needing. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, you can go ahead and message me directly or comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and also check out my Facebook page, Instagram, and other social media. These uh, are the ways to really help me know these are the kind of videos you want to see. But as always, take it out there. Bye.